Welcome to Good Knit Kisses Techniques and Tutorials. Hi, I'm Kristen. We're teaching techniques and tutorials at Good Knit Kisses to help keep you in stitches. <laughs> Today's clip is from a longer video. We are going to shorten it down for you today. So click on the link in the description below if you'd like more information or that full video tutorial. All right, let's begin. All right, we're going to make a wrapped letter. I'm wrapping this in yarn and I'm not going to use any glue or tape or anything. It's simply just wrapping it around. The benefit to that is you can reuse this letter later or you can change out the yarn to another color, whatever you want to do. So uh, today I'm going to wrap this and then I'll also show you how to make a little hanger that hangs this right here and then you can hang it on the wreath that I'm going to make or hang it on whatever you want. Uh, you'll need a tape measure for that part of it. Otherwise, you just need your yarn and some scissors and then a, a tapestry needle or needle that will fit, the eye of the needle will fit the type of yarn you're using. I'm using Bernat Beyond. This is a super bulky number six weight yarn. We're not going to use very much of it, just enough to wrap it. Okay, so start with just taking whatever, um, whatever you've got on there for tags. Um, it doesn't matter if these stay on here or not. I'm going to set everything else to the side and start wrapping. I'll show you how I execute that, how I do it, uh, and then uh, you'll be able to kind of figure out how to do it on the letter that you're going to do. And you'll see the little trick how I carry the yarn uh, down the back without glue or anything like that. It may require wrapping it a couple of times. So I'm going to start by um, getting my yarn in the back. Okay, just hold it, let it be loose. This is just going to get wrapped in here. And then I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to flip it this side, start at the top. Okay, and so I'm going to wrap around this point here, and I want to try and build up a little bit of yarn around this area. And this is only because I've done this on uh, an exact duplicate of this already. So I'm going to build this up because I also need to cover up this wood part here. Now you can start with the color. Um, paint this first if you want to in the color of yarn you're using. And then you don't need as much. But um, who's going to do that? I'm not. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to simply go around and get it right to the edge of this letter. And I'm going to get right on the corners and go around it until I cover up all that extra wood. Now the end here, I can just slide it to the end when I'm done. And you can even touch this up with some marker or something or just make it in black. And now I've completely covered that little serif part. And I'm just gonna wrap all the way down. This little thing can hide in the back. And just continue wrapping where it's all squished side by side. Okay, and then when I get down to where the um, letter starts breaking. I'm gonna wrap a little extra thick. Okay, so now that I've kind of covered up this little area here, uh, I'm gonna go to secure it, just go around this whole thing, kind of get that little pocket in there done. Now, I'm gonna flip it onto the back just so, so you can see what I'm doing, and I'm gonna hold it with my thumb and go down here. Give it a little bit of slack. I'm gonna trap this in later and then move my other thumb down to hold it. Let me flip this around. So now you can see I'm just holding it the back here and I'm gonna go around that bottom of that letter by that serif and then do it one more time like we had done before on the top part. And then I'm gonna go down to the end here and then kind of let my, um, let my yarn grab on the corners. And sometimes, it depends upon the serif, so it depends on what's happening on yours, but like I would grab this top part of this hard corner first and let it kind of overlap and overlay a little bit and then do the next one and then jump a space and go down to the very end and then fill it in with that yarn. See, I'm just now I'm going in between where those layers were. And I didn't really care if I got it too thick around these because my main thing is I didn't want it to be... Um, I didn't really want to see the, the wood uh, sticking out here. See, there was some wood before, but now I've really covered it up. I don't care if it's too thick. To me, I don't. I, I like it to be consistent looking, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to go all the way around. And so I'm holding it this direction because it's more comfortable. Um, but hold it in whatever direction works for you. So just continue all the way up to that spot. 
And when you get back up to here, uh, uh, we're going to just go ahead and pause your video. And when you get up to this spot, um, unpause it and I'll show you how to move on. Okay. So you can see I'm getting closer up here and I'm kind of guiding it with my fingers in the back and holding on to it as I go. And there we go. All right. And now I'm going to turn it around and see how I can now start wrapping in the other direction around this one. And I've, uh, oh, by the way, this part I've now, um, it's, it's trapped in here and it's just laying right here and I can tuck this in later with my tapestry needle and I'll show you how to do that a little later. Uh, so now we're going to go around this thin part. Actually, I'm going to turn it back in this direction and I'm just guiding it with my finger and putting it where I want it. This one's a little, a little more hard to manage because you got to go around all these little zigzags. It takes longer. And go ahead and keep doing it until you get down to your next little stopping point and we'll continue on. This would be how you would wrap a um, letter A, which is going to be pretty frequent <laughs> for some people. Um, and letter E, I would definitely wrap sideways. I wouldn't try and wouldn't try and wrap something vertically. It's always going to be in the shortest distance if possible. You could wrap in cardboard, you know, and just trace out your uh, trace out your pattern. But you might want to double your cardboard and trace out um, two letters the same size, and then glue them together for something thick. Uh, so you could totally do this with um, just scrap stuff that you have. You don't have to buy a letter, you know, or some old phone board or something like that. Okay, so now I'm down at the end of this one, and um, I want to get this tip done because I can't, if I wrap this from here down to here, I found that it um, it, it doesn't cover up this part of the A as well. So um, I'm going to get one more round here. And also, I'm going to get one side of this A down here. And that is nice and secure in that. And I'm going to go overlap that. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of covering up this little notch um, because, because of the angles, it doesn't, it doesn't hide very well. And this is just from me doing it from the first time. So, and I'll... I'll have a gap here, and then when I come back, I'll fill this in. All right, so now that, I'm, now that I've kind of gone around this part, I'm going to hold it in the back and let it go all the way to the end and use my other finger to hold it. Okay, and then just wrap all the way around that tip, and you can go run around one here and let that catch. And then try and kind of how you did it here, maybe like let it be on the edge and then fill it in. So it just takes, it just takes some kind of finesse and I'm pulling on it pretty hard. Okay. So just continue going around. I like not using the, I don't, I like not using the, uh, the glue. Um, one, it's not a mess or, and I don't get burned if it's hot glue, but also, um, I like that I can reuse this letter because I'm not always going to want it wrapped in yarn. Okay, I'm getting all the way up here and now I'm going to wrap that in, give it another layer on top and it covers up that little hole that was there. And now I'm just going to turn around the other side and work my way up again. So um, I'm back up. I didn't go very far. I just wanted to show you. Um, I remembered when I go on a severe angle like this, sometimes what I have to do is overlap my stitches and uh, cause I'll start being in an angle, but I need it to be um, uh, easier up here straighter. So like I start adjusting and overlapping a couple of stitches. So not that these are stitches, but a couple of wraps. So, all right, continue on. Okay, so I'm up here where this little uh, area is. I'm changing the directions and it's gonna be similar to what I did over here. And I'm just, I'm just adding in some extra yarn here to get that little, that little area done. All right, go around. 
And I'm going to go a little bit lower than what you think because you think, oh, I'm going to do this, but it's going to leave that little spot there. So just kind of overlap it because um, everybody knows it's going to be that letter. It's okay if it's not going all the way up to that point there. So just cover that up. And then when you get that next part on there, it'll, it'll be fine. All right, so I'm covering up a couple of them and I'm going to go wrap around and go down to the bottom first because I want to end at the top of the letter. So I'm going to come down here, do what I did before where I grab it with my finger and then I take my next finger and hold it. And then I go down to where the bottom of the serif is and wrap around a couple of times. And this one's so thin, it's a little harder. Uh, you might have to rework it a couple of times. I like how this yarn kind of spreads out on me, this brunette. Um, and then I can kind of cover up the top of that. Um, the top of that letter easier. You may have to play with it a couple times. Okay. Just going to wrap a few times over, wrap that end, and then just keep going. And if it's showing, you know, you can just use a colored marker to color that, uh, cover that up. And then um, if you use it another time, you can change the color out. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, I'm at the last serif. So I'm going to wrap it one more time just to make sure. Get that extra little part in there. And so you can see it's not it's not the perfection. It's actually, I think it's fun to not have this perfect because you get all that extra texture. See that? It just jumped off because I'm sitting here talking. So I'm going to rewrap a couple of this. Just, just do it again. It's no big deal. Okay. All right. Now, I'm on the back, and then um, I want to cut a length here. And then I want to keep that nice and tight. So if you can, hold on to it or get someone to hold it on there for you while you put your tapestry needle on. Okay. So I've got a nice long strand here that I can work with. I've got it pulling it tight. And then just go into, um, don't worry about the hangers right now. This is just to complete all your, um, your tie-ins and stuff. So just going to go into a stitch and pull through and get a loop. And then we're just going to pull through that loop. So when you've got a little loop, then pull on it. And we're going to make that as tight as we can. And then we're going to do it again. Find another set of loops and pull through and make a loop and tie that up. And once you've got a few in there, then you can just work through a few of these. This is again, this is on the back. All right. And no one's going to see this back side. And if they are, then you can wrap this nicer on the back too, and then um, tuck them in later. So I don't need anything else on that. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. And then this one, I wanna work it in. And see, it's uh, shorter, so if you have something shorter like this, you can um, go ahead and put your needle in, go through a couple of these layers here at a time. First, before you try and thread it. And then thread it. And this is a plastic needle, so it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna bend on me. Um, they can break, so you gotta be careful with them. But in this case, it's nice, cause I can get in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna pull it on through, and that's it. I'm gonna clip that off, and then all you need to do is make your hangers. So use it like this, uh, or make your hangers. So. My hangers, uh, I want to cut a couple of lengths here, about the same. Okay, and then I'm gonna tie them on 
We're going to tie them around the serif on here and around the back and just make a secure knot, a square knot. So you tie it left over right and then right over left. Okay. And then I'm going to get the other one on there, put it about the same spot. Okay. All right. And then now I want to make sure that this is about a three inch uh, hang and we'll make sure both of them are the same. So I'm going to go down here. This is three inches. You can even make a, um, maybe you make a knot and say, that's my measured distance. So that one's a little bit more than three. It's three and a half. If I measure this one at three, it should do the same thing. I just want to make sure they're both the same. And make sure that this is the distance I want. Yep, and that actually ended up being about the same <laughs> the way that I tied it. So then I'm just going to um, uh, do the same thing here and make sure my knot falls right where that one is. And then I know that it's the right distance. So that's a little, little hack <laughs> to make sure you get them the same distance is just go ahead and put a knot at the length that you want it. And then once you have that, you can um, secure it. Um, well, you know what? I got that one messed up a little bit. So here we go. Okay. All right. Now I've got my two hangers and then these can be uh, attached to something. So what I've done is um, I can attach them to something else and then hang it that way. And then it will hang from the object that you need. Thanks for joining me on Good Knit Kisses Technique Tutorials. Be sure to subscribe and also comment down below and tell me what techniques and stitches that you would like to see. Have a great day and happy knit and crochet.